do you have a minute? I sure do. There's something I want to talk to you about. That's okay. okay. Yeah, have a seat. What's up, Anna? The reason that we brought the Safe Talk training to our students and staff here at Eastview, so Eastview Secondary School is one of uh, a pilot school. We have a mental health pilot school project. Eastview is one of the schools in the board within this project. So the Safe Talk training was actually uh, created so that our students would learn how to uh, follow through on a, a board goal that we also have and a school goal on student leadership and student voice. Well, taking Safe Talk, I kind of learned uh, a lot about, you know, warning signs and stuff and symptoms about people who are struggling with uh, depression, suicide, uh, self-harm, any type of negative thoughts toward themselves. Um, and I, I learned a lot about, you know, how people can um, give off signs that you wouldn't expect to be signs for these types of things. There's a ton of more signs of suicide that you would think. Mm -hmm. And the like approach about suicide is you don't really beat about around the bush. You gotta really go around with it and just say, be like, are you considering it or not? When I uh, first heard about uh, assist training, I was very excited to take part in it because um, I did not come from a, a guidance background or a student support background. I came from a physics and math background. so. The idea of assisting students um, when they came to me with, you know, questions of uh, mental health or uh, suicide ideations, I was really um, concerned that I would say the wrong thing or not be helpful. I went to my principal immediately and said, I am very interested in doing this and um, had an excellent two days with uh, Danielle and Dawn, uh, just learning and through role play and uh, we got an excellent uh, resource, our, our CISC participant notebook um, that I have on my desk all the time. Um, and just the amount of things that I learned were, was, uh, was fantastic. And the assist training gets you, you know, right to the point, it gets you to make sure you get the services you require immediately. And uh, that's very important to me. From the Safe Talk workshop, um, I learned about the prevalence of suicide and the unfortunate reality of how common it actually is. Um, and then I also learned um, how to recognize the signs and warnings of someone who has maybe been struggling with thoughts of suicide. And then the right steps to take and who to contact to um, best benefit that person and how to help them with their problems. From Safe Talk, I really learned how to identify and approach individuals who may be having thoughts of suicide and really how to um, talk to them because I think in today's society it's, it's a very sensitive topic and to talk to our peers or maybe even a stranger on the street, it's very, very hard for us to do that. But now with Safe Talk, what we've learned from Safe Talk, I can approach those people and get them the help that they need. And the Safe Talk training really um, on mental health demystifies uh, the whole stigma of mental health. It really empowers our students and our staff in order to help one another. And as you know, students always go to students uh, for help and support. So the Safe Talk training, our grade 12 students, uh, period one, on two separate days went through the training. So one half of our grade 12 students and their homeroom te teachers were trained. And then the second week, the following Friday, we had the second part of the classes. So most of our grade 12 students have been trained with Safe Talk training as well as their homeroom teachers. And it just enables a whole school community in order to work together and empower and to uh, demystify the mental health. Because if you just beat around the bush and they just go on, there's so many regrets you could have had because you could have helped them, but you just said, oh, I'm just going to keep my own comfort zone and like, see, don't want to bother them. You got to bother them for them to say anything because it's not that easy for them because they're going through a lot. And the last thing they're going to want to do is open up. You have to really, you don't want to force them but at the same time, you want to get them to open up, but you can't be really shy or slight about it because it won't work that way. I kind of identify with a lot of myself being a normal teenage girl and being able to, you know, I've had, just like lots of my friends, had lots of, you know, not direct, but lots of personal experience with this type of thing. And it was just interesting to uh, be able to get a, like figure out um, what those warning signs were and be able to, um, maybe have a, an impact on somebody someday when I can identify one of those. If you've taken the training, you never really know when you may be in a situation where you have to help someone who has suicidal thoughts. So um, after taking the training, you can feel more confident in your ability to help somebody. And then it will be benefit everybody really because the more people that know about Safe Talk, the more 
um, they can help everyone around them and then less people will have to go through anything alone. If everyone in our community knew the skills that I've learned from Safe Talk, um, as a whole we might be able to identify or approach the people that may be having thoughts of suicide and hopefully prevent it before it happens. Kids in school struggle with this stuff all the time and, and being able to um, just be, that, be that, that help, that safe place where they can turn and say, here's what, I'm, here's what I've got going on, now I trust you, and learn also when to get help and when, not, when, it's, less, when it's not necessary. Uh, so when, it, when it's important to take it to somebody when you can't handle it on your own, uh, and it's important to know that, and I think the more people who can um, do that and be able to uh, deal with it not themselves and, and, and seek people who will actually help the person. On my behalf anyway, it helped me anyway because I deal with a lot of suicide on a daily basis with a lot of those who have lost friends and family. Mm -hmm. And it really helps me because I know what I should tell them, what I should do for. I already knew some things I can do, but doing this at least I have a little more of a professional insight on it. Mm -hmm. And at least I know a, a little more on what I should do, what I should say with people I can recommend them to, even if they're in a different country, this is what they can do, this is what they can say, and just how to deal with it after, even so you don't get yourself thrown into a brush in yourself. During my year at Nottawasaga Pine Secondary School, we were a uh, leading mentally healthy schools pilot school. Uh, while I was not on the committee, I was still involved in um, a lot of the initiatives uh, uh, set up by the school and uh, really supported um, the direction the board and the school is taking to support students uh, and their mental health. Um, the, you know, the whole idea of the SIPSA and then well-being, um, I, I really support that and think it's an excellent uh, idea because it's, it's more than just uh, data. We have to support the students and the teachers' uh, well-being. And I've, I've worked with teachers as well who've come to me and, and uh, been... Um, have had some mental health issues that uh, you know needed to be discussed uh, beyond myself, um, so I would I would give them or hopefully give them direction of where, where they should talk to next. And I would really like to thank the uh, the staff members and our student members who are part of our steering committee for our mental health plan, and uh, and how we can go forward helping and supporting one another. We are able to empower our students and our staff to have those open discussions to demystify mental health and to really help one another so that we are safe and we are healthy.